everybody, Doc MTG here, and it's time for that deck that tech I was talking about, the Scarab God. I have to thank MTG Unscrewed for this because he gave me this as part of a mail day. You can check out that video, I'll put a link right up here in the corner. But before we start discussing the deck tech, if you enjoy the content on this channel, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the content, it goes a super long way helping support the channel. You can also support the channel by checking out the description right down below. You'll see a link to my Patreon page and a link to my Amazon affiliate link that will help support the channel every time you shop, a small percentage comes back. So, Scarab God, this uh, little godly beast. I've actually had quite fun playing this deck. I've actually had the deck done for quite a while. The deck list is actually online on Tapped Out. There'll be a link in the description below as well. Ended up naming this deck Scrappy Doo and the Gang. So, what's Scarab God do? Scarab God is a 5 5 for 3 of blue and black, and a legendary god. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life, and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. His very awesome ability of 2 a blue and a black. Exile target creature card from a graveyard, any graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. Really busted in the certain situations. But before we get into creatures and stuff, we have lands, obviously, to go over. There are 35 lands in the deck. And we'll start with light utility lands and stuff. So we have Terramorphic Expanse. This is, uh, you know, just get a basic out of our deck. Westvale Abbey. It's nice because there's actually a small token synergy with zombies, so this comes in handy. Temple of the False God, some ramp. The Down Yard, which just stands for Colorless, but then you could pay one of blue and black, tap it in target player, puts the top three cards of his or her library into their graveyard. Bajukabog to nuke uh, opponent's pesky graveyard if it's too troublesome for us. We have the Crypt, this helps ramp, depending on how many creatures we have in our graveyard. Sunken Hollow. Feeded Pools. Choked Etuary. Temple of Deceit. Drowned Catacomb. Command Tower. And then we move into our basics, we have 6 Islands. And 17 Swamps. Grand total of 35 lands. Moving into our creature spells, we have an array of creatures, a total of 29 creatures, because this is like a small tribal zombie kind of deck. It's, again, not too competitive, it's just nice and casual and fun. The deck you get like made completely for like $190, not even that much. So we have a Shepherd of Rot. For one, a black, you get a 1-1 one, one zombie that says when you tap it, each player loses one life for each zombie in play. That's everybody's zombies and that's everybody. This could get out of hand and this could just end the game and make it a draw. Next we have Liliana, the healer, the flip planeswalker. If you guys are not aware of what she does, she is a 2-3 with lifelink and then whenever another non-token creature dies, you exile this Liliana, you flip her, and you put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. She becomes a Defiant Necromancer, a 3 loyalty Planeswalker with plus 2. Each player discards a card, which will fuel a graveyard, or minus X. Return target non-legendary creature card with converted mana cost X to the battlefield. And her emblem, which is, whenever a creature dies, return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Pretty sweet. And that's her checklist card. Next we have Zombie Master, this is a zombie. For one in double black you get two, three zombies that says all zombies in play, gain a swamp walk, and pay one black, regenerate it as long as this card remains in play. We got Unbreathing Horde, for two in a black you get a zero zero zombie that says when it enters the battlefield, with 1-1 one, one counters on it for each zombie you control and each zombie card in your graveyard. And if it will be dealt damage, you remove a counter instead. We have Giraffe's Messenger for triple black. You get a zombie that says, enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses 2 life and then undying. This 
When this creature dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters on it, returns to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. Jeez. What a mouthful. We have good old Lord of the Accurse for two and a black. You give your other zombies plus one plus one, and you can give them menace by paying one a black and tapping him. Good little two three. Flashback Marauder, because when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. Pretty much, you're never going to actually keep this on the battlefield. This is what you're probably going to be sacrificing. Think of this as a removal spell, but for everybody. We have Cemetery Reaper for one dull black. Another zombie lord that gives our zombies plus one plus one. And he can go ahead and, for two and a black and tapping him, exile target creature card from a graveyard and put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature onto the battlefield. He is good at munching down. Dire Grief Colossus. For two and a black, you get a 2-2 two -two zombie giant that says, when it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one -one counter on it for each zombie card in your graveyard. And then whenever you cast a zombie spell, put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. There goes that little mini token synergy I was talking about. We have Plague Belcher, because why not? It's a... 5-4 with Menace, but it enters the battlefield, put two negative one, negative one counters on a creature you control. But whenever another zombie you control dies, go ahead and each opponent loses one life. We got good old Kalidus in here, because reasons why not exile some creatures when things are a little out of control and out of our range. We have a Grave Digger. Always love this copy of Grave Digger. Digger. I mean, Digger. How shiny the border is. Whoosh. But this is returns a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Liliana's Reaper for two and double black. You get the 4-3 zombie that says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card and you put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. Remember, zombies are very slow. That's why they come in tapped and then they're still have to untap and some sickness and all that nonsense but yeah we got corpse auger for three and a black when it dies you may draw x cards you lose x life where x is the number of creature cards in target players graveyard Got the risen executor another zombie lord can't block and when you cast oh no sorry not when but you may cast resident executor from your graveyard if you pay one more to cast it for each other creature in your graveyard. We got the DC Undead Vizier, nice little tutor. Dread Slaver for three and dull black. Whenever a creature dealt combat damage, or not combat damage, but any damage by Dread Slaver, this turn dies. Return it to the battlefield under your control, except it's a black zombie in addition to its other types. It's three five, so it's probably gonna live most of the time through combat. But it doesn't even have to deal combat damage. You could have fight damage or redirect damage from this. As long as you kill that creature, you'll get it. Noose Graph Mob. Pretty ridiculous. Not really going to stay too long in this card. Gem Palm Polluter. You're never really going to cast this card to put it onto the battlefield. Because you really want to cycle it. And this is why. Whenever you cycle... Gem Palm Polluter, you may have target player lose one life for each zombie in play. Overwarm the board with zombies. If somebody has an impetual fortress, you go ahead and cycle this puppy away. Plus, you can always, you know, eternalize it with um, Scarab God if you really want on the battlefield. We have our Overseer of the Damned for 5 and double black. You get a 5-5 five, five Flying Demon that says... When it enters the battlefield, destroy, you may destroy a target creature. And then whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, put a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped. Tons of zombies everywhere. But one of my favorite cards in this deck is Butcher of Malakir. Because he says, whenever Butcher of Malakir or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So, pretty much... You're making tokens, and you're sacrificing them with likes of DC-like effects. 
So then all your other opponents have to uh, sacrifice a creature. They're now in their graveyards, and if you have Scarab God out, you can eternalize their best creatures. Even though mostly your opponents are probably going to sack their least best creatures, but still, you're going to get there if you keep sacking things and you keep Butcher Malakir out. And there's another effect just like this in the deck in an enchantment form, but we'll get there later. We have... The Primordial is a freaking awesome card because it has Intimidate, but who really cares about that because what you really want is when it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Go ahead, steal graveyards for each of your opponents, sack this thing, bring it back with Scarab God, do it again. All the lols in the world. Then we have a Forgotten Creation, yes it's quite forgotten, but at the beginning of your upkeep you may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. If you have like some big creature like Butcher Malakir that you just can't cast or like a, you know, the Primordial, discard that, use Scarab God to eternalize it for way cheaper and still get the effect. Another Primordial, but this one is... Instead of creatures, you get to choose an instant or sorcery card from that graveyard and cast it without paying that mana cost. Cast the big spells, why the hell not? Cast them a second time as well. And then we have the prize amalgam because why not? This is a zombie deck. Things are going to be coming back from the graveyard onto the battlefield and vice versa. He'll come back plenty. We have Jissa and a Giraffe for two, a blue and a black. It says, when it enters the battlefield, you may put, oh, you know, it's not a May ability, but you put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. During each of your turns, you may cast a zombie card from your graveyard. So in case you don't have Scarab God, but you do have some zombies, why not cast them again from the graveyard straight to the battlefield? Consuming Aberration is a monster in any deck that has to deal with graveyards. Because it says, whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals the top card of his or her library until he or she reveals a land card and puts those cards into his or her graveyard. And its power and toughness is equal to the number of cards in all graveyards. We have a Necromancer. No, wait, we have a Necromaster Dragon. I have to thank my boy. Jonathan Knight for sending this cod so I had to put this in the deck and since I don't really have that many flyers this works out well for me especially because it has synergy with zombies thank you sir then one of my favorites that goes paired with Butcher Malak here is it that betrays for 12 mana it has Annihilator 2 it's an 11-11 Aldrazi and it says when whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-creature permanent put that card onto the battlefield under your control steal their stuff or better yet let their stuff betray them and then you don't even need scarab god this is just amazing all by itself but if you need to bring that back using scarab god sounds pretty good so now into the non-creature spells we are running one planeswalker beside the flip planeswalker and that's liliana's death majesty she's pretty bomb she's pretty new so most of you guys are gonna know what she does We have seven instants. We have Factor Fiction, Induce Paranoia, which is awesome for me to use because I like taking things from graveyards. So for two and double blue, you get an instant that says target player, I mean, no, not target player, counter target spell. If black was spent to play Induce Paranoia, that spell's controller puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard where X is that spell's converted mana cost. People like casting big stuff in Commander. This is not really a mill deck, but if I can mill some of your stuff into your graveyard without you knowing what's going to be milled in there within like the top, let's say if you cast a 9 CMC spell, sure, I'll do that. And then I'll try taking whatever you got in there with Scarab God. Hero's Downfall, nice little insurance policy. We have Empty the Pits, because when it's super late game and there's really nothing going on and Scarab God costs way too much to, let's say, cast again, because 
the only way you're gonna really have that issue if it's getting exiled all the time but empty the pits super nice it says it has Dell for double X and for black put X two two black zombie creatures onto the battlefield tapped instant speed we have far and away a return target creature to its owner's hand target player sacrifices a creature not bad we have a soul manipulation for one a blue and a black counter target creature spell because you want sometimes counter their commander from hitting the battlefield or return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand if you don't have the scarab got out and you need something from your graveyard back perplex for one a blue and a black counter target spell unless its controller discards his or her hand and it also has transmute nice little bonus but having more cards at the graveyard is always a plus and here we go again mind grind which starts our sorceries we have a total of 10 of them so mind grind's pretty strong card a lot of people know about this card already for x a blue and a black each opponent reveals cards from his from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals X land cards then puts all cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard, X cannot be zero. Even doing this for like one, if it's a land like deck, they're going to be putting a lot of cards into the graveyard and it's all your opponents. So you actually get to have options with Scarab God. Praetor's Grasp for one and double black. You get a sorcery that says search target opponent's library for a card, exile it face down. Then that player shuffle his or her library. You may look at the you may look and play that card as long as it remains exiled. Pretty cool way to take out one of your opponent's win conditions. We have batter in blood. Each player sacrifices two creatures. Raise from the grave, bring a creature back from our graveyard, or from a graveyard, doesn't really matter whose, to the battlefield under our control. From under the floorboards, put three 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield tapped and gain three life, but if you pay this with his madness cost, you'll get X instead. Razakat's rights. Uh, I don't really have a Vampiric Tutor, so this works just fine with me. And if anything, I can just cycle it to draw a card. Lice Finale. Four and double black. Sorcery. Destroy all creatures, then search target opponent's library for up to three creature cards and put them into his or her graveyard, then shuffle that opponent's library. It's also just a cool thing to do with this. So you destroy all the creatures. And let's say they have, like... Kozlak or Ulamog in their library, you go ahead and grab those, you put them into their graveyard and shuffle the whole graveyard away. This way it locks out there if they are a deck to have like graveyard synergy. Ever after for four and double black return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard. This one's only from yours to the battlefield under your control and their black zombies in addition to their types and this goes to the bottom of your library necromatic selection for four and three black you get a sorcery that says destroy all creatures then return a creature card put into the graveyard this way onto the battlefield under your control it's a black zombie in addition to its other types and then you exile this big fatty rise of the dark realms this is a super late game card or if, you have, if you're fueling your graveyard extremely fast, this is like really good if you have the mana. Put all creature cards from all graveyards under the battlefield under your control. Better after big board wipes and taking everybody's creatures all at once. We have now moving into enchantments. We have a Phanax God of Deception. He's really good because most of our creatures have a good amount of toughness and creatures you control get tap them and target player puts the top x cards where x is that creature's toughness seven enchantments in total we have a call to the kindred just pop this on a zombie and then it says at the beginning of your upkeep you may reveal the top five cards or not reveal but you may look at the top five cards of your library if you do you may put a creature that shares a creature type with the one enchanted onto the battlefield put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order that you want. Super cool, super eerie, nice, I love it, Halloween time. We have Graph Harvest for one black, 
zombies, you control half menace, then you have the bonus of for three and a black, you exile a creature card from your graveyard and put a two two black zombie on the battlefield tapped. Diabolic Servitude, a wall of text. Pretty much in a nutshell, you get to pretty much you get to put a creature card onto the battlefield under your control. With this enchanted on it, and if this leaves the battlefield, your creature gets exiled, and if your creature dies, this gets returned to your hand. Black market for three and double black. Whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on black market, and at the beginning of your pre combat main phase, put a. Oh no, not put a, but put or add black mana, one black mana to your mana pool for each charge counter on black market. Dictate of Erebos, just like Butcher of Malakir, whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and it has flash. Liliana's Mastery, another Lord type effect, and gives us some zombies. Moving into artifacts, we have Soul Ring. Everybody knows about Soul Ring. Skull Clamp for our zombies, so just, you know, knock them off. Altar of the Brood, because we have things entering the battlefield almost every turn, and why not mill our opponents? Swift Foot Boots to give some protection. Illusionist Bracers, it becomes quite insane. Attached to Scarab God, getting double the effect, is extremely nice. Darksteel Ingot, Commander Sphere, Whip of Erebos, giving our creatures lifelink. Cryptic Gateway, one probably not people have seen. So for 5 mana you get an artifact that says, so in a nutshell, I'm going to explain it. Tap two untapped creatures you control. You may put a creature card from your hand into play that shares a type with the, each creature that was tapped this way. And last but not least, we have a God Pharaoh's Gift. Super recent into the game. So at the beginning of your combat step, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, put a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. It gains haste until end of turn. Woo! Let me know what you guys think about the deck down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to hit the little subscribe button right there in that corner. And as always, guys, this is Doc MTG saying peace.